Marco Rubio had a very, very bad night. And personally, I'd call for him to drop out of the race. I think it's time now that he drop out of the race. I would love to take on Ted one-on-one. -on -one. That would be so much fun. Ours is the only campaign that has repeatedly beaten Donald Trump. And indeed, we're the only campaign that can and will beat Donald Trump in this race. Donald Trump and Ted Cruz both calling for a two-man race after they each won two states last night. And it's time now for our Sunday group syndicated columnist, George Will. Julie Pace, who covers the White House and the campaign for the Associated Press. Mike Duhame, who was a top advisor to Governor Chris Christie's presidential campaign. And Charles Lane from the Washington Post. Well, George, what do you make of this week's developments? Trump's continued march toward the nomination, Romney's speech, and this escalating talk about the Republican Party tearing itself apart. I think we may have passed peak Trump, as it will be known. Uh, I don't think Mr. Romney was under any illusions that he was going to talk Trump supporters out of supporting him. I think he knows the axiom that you cannot reason people out of a position they have not been reasoned into. But we now set his speech sets up a very interesting phenomenon. If Mr. Trump is the nominee, he will be opposed by the most recent Republican nominee. No way Romney could support him which sort of fits because the Republican nominee will have been said that the most recent Republican president should have been impeached, which gives you a sense of the chaos. But our parties are not flimsy things. Democratic Party is the oldest party in the world. The Republican and Democratic parties have been framing this debate in this country for 160 years. What the Republican Party needs to avoid blowing up is to get a binary choice between Mr. Trump and someone else. I think the evidence that we're approaching that is the fact that Ted Cruz announced late last week that he was going to open 10 offices in the state of Florida. He's probably not doing that to win Florida. He's probably doing that to prevent Marco Rubio from winning it. If that happens, indeed, you've got your binary choice and you've got the best chance of not settling this in Cleveland, where if, in the out what you outlined with Rush Limbaugh, Trump has a majority of, uh, of the largest share of delegates, but not a majority, then you would have a blow up. Mike, let me turn to you, because we saw last night's results, picking up on what George said. Trump wins two states, Cruz wins two states, Kasich and Rubio win nothing. Uh, Trump calling on Rubio to drop out. Is this in effect, not officially, but in effect, now a two-man race. I think we've gotten to that point. I don't think we'll know for sure until after March 15th. Governor Kasich and Senator Rubio have each put a premium on winning his home state. I think they have to win that at the bare minimum to stay in. The problem is both of their strategies to this point was to hope that that would be the moment where it gets to be a two-person race. Senator Cruz has had enough success now that I think uh, he's in, and he'll be in for the long haul. And, and if, if either Governor Kasich or Senator Rubio win their home state, you're going to have at least three now marching for, for a long piece in which the effect really is ultimately just to stop Trump from getting a majority delegates. And what delegates. do you think? as George pointed out, of Cruz's idea of going into Florida, maybe not to beat, to win the state, winner take all, but to take down Rubio so that it becomes Cruz and Trump. It's very smart. The goal for anybody who wasn't Donald Trump during this campaign going back six, seven months was to get to a point where you could be one-on-one -on -one against Donald Trump. I think Ted Cruz is very smart to do this. This is now a four-way game of chess as opposed to 17 like it was in the beginning. I think it's a really smart move to try to get to that one-on-one. -on -one but what moment. about Trump? And he said this, it wasn't part of the clip that we ran, but he said, I want a two-man race against Cruz because when we go to the Northeast, we go to places like New York or we go to Pennsylvania or we go out to California, I'm going to beat Cruz badly. I think he's right. I think he wants. I think he wants that as well. I think he's gotten to that point where he feels that he can go up as well. I think also you have to show that level of confidence that you're not afraid of what everybody else is shooting for. And I think he he will have an advantage over Ted Cruz in some of those states. And right now he's got a significant delegate advantage. And if he does win Florida and 99 delegates there, he's just going to continue to widen that margin. Then there was the Fox Republican debate this week. Here's a clip. Breathe, Lion breathe, Ted. Breathe. <laughs> You can do it. You can breathe. I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but just... When they're done with the yoga, can I answer a question? You, you... Oh, boy. <laughs> Julie, I know that you're covering the campaign, but you also talk to folks at the White House, and you talk to a lot of the Democrats, too, on the campaign trail. What do they make of Trump? What do they make of all of the theatrics that we're seeing, some would say kind of lowbrow, and do they think that the Republicans are just handing them 
the presidency, or do they actually worry about the appeal that Trump has seen in his ability to bring in new voters? I think you've seen an evolution in the way that Democrats view Trump. Initially, there was a sense that this was such a gift to Democrats. If they could just let Trump stay in this race and continue to say these things that would alienate a lot of voters that Democrats need in the general election, then this would be a, a huge gift and basically give Hillary Clinton, essentially, the presidency. The shift that you've seen, though, comes from watching Republicans handle Trump and this realization that you can't just give him a pathway and let him self-destruct. And right now you have groups around Hillary Clinton and inside the Hillary Clinton campaign that are preparing for a general election matchup with him and taking it very seriously, looking at his business record, looking at things he's been saying about women, about minorities, and they would run an aggressive campaign because they just don't know what would happen. You kind of have to take every assumption that we have about politics and throw it out the window, and you have to look at the map in a potentially different way. So I wouldn't say that they are worried to the point where they think that Hillary could actually lose, but they are preparing for a tough campaign. And what do they make of the fact that, that whether you like them or not, there's this huge enthusiasm gap with record turnout in Republican primary after primary and not particularly strong turnout in the Democratic contest. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be a turnout game in the general election. No matter who the nominees of these parties are, you have to turn out your base. And Trump is, is showing an ability to energize people to get them to show up at the polls. And we all know that Hillary Clinton has some problems with her likability, factors that make people want to get out and vote for you. And so they know that this would be a potential issue for her. And I think Republicans look, having lost the popular vote in five out of the last six elections, a race against Ted Cruz is much more of a traditional race like we've had in those last six elections. A race against Donald Trump is very much uh, out there. It's very much, he's very much an X factor. So you think actually Trump would be a tougher candidate for the Democrats to beat than Cruz? I don't know that he'll be tougher in the long run, but I, don't, I think it's very hard for them to tell right now who, will be, who would be tougher. Chuck, uh, I want to go back to our basic question at the beginning of this program. Is all the talk about the Republican Party tearing itself apart, is that overblown, or is the party of Lincoln, the party that started in 1860, is it in real jeopardy? I would say it's in real jeopardy in two ways. Okay? The first way is just prospects for the general election. If you look at the most recent Gallup poll numbers, the most popular figure in the general populace in the Republican Party is Marco Rubio. And during this entire process, all the fire of all the candidates and all the money has been aimed at Marco Rubio and destroying Marco Rubio. And the two people who are left standing, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, have the worst favorability going into November. So that's problem one. Problem two is just the ideas the ideology and the coherence and messaging of the party has been completely scrambled by this campaign. If you're down ballot in the Republican Party, if you're running for Senate, if you're running for Congress, even state legislature, you right now have no idea who's going to be the top of your ticket and what you're going to, who your partner at the top of the ticket is going to be. So it's destabilized. I wouldn't say split or broken, that remains to be seen, but it has completely destabilized the party in a year where they really had, going in, pretty good prospects, a real chance of, of taking the presidency. How does a party, I know you say, well, look, a party is a strong structure and it's gone through various permutations and combinations over the years, George, but, but how does a party survive when you've got, at least at this point, the two leading candidates, Trump and Cruz, who are basically running against the Washington establishment and saying that they're corrupt and they're going to go in and change things? It survives by planning ahead in case Mr. Trump is the nominee. There are already reliable reports that Republican senatorial candidates, incumbents and otherwise, are planning to distance themselves even with ads taking on the, the man at the top of the ticket. Second. Well, so, so you're saying Republican attack ads against the Republican nominee? Distancing ads. <laughs> <laughs> Second, the Republican Party is going to have to rethink the business of having open primaries and caucuses. Seven of the, what, 19 events so far have been closed. Trump has lost five of them. So the question is, is this, as has been said, a hostile takeover of the Republican Party? And the Republicans have to think whether they want to go forward year after year vulnerable to this.